So this is Khushbu and uh, your host for today's program. I'm designated as a mentor and project manager at Zatuna Academy since its inception. And I welcome you all to this wonderful gathering on behalf of Zaituna Academy. I hope you all are in good health and spending good quality spiritual time this Ramadan. May Allah make us of those who come out of this Ramadan purified and forgiven. We'll start our program with the Quranic recitation of Surya Zuha, for which we have Fatima Zehra. So, Fatima Zehra, you can start now. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wazuha Wallayli iza saja Ma wadda qarabbuka wa ma qala Walal akhiratu khayrul laka minal ula Wala sawfa yutwika rabbuka fatarza Alam yajidka yatima fa'aba Wa wajadaka ghala fahda وَوَجَدَكَ عَائِلًا فَأَغْنَى فَأَمَّا الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقْهَرْ وَأَمَّا السَّائِلَ فَلَا تَنْهَرْ وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَظِيمُ Jazakallah Fatima for such a beautiful recitation. Now next we have Mahira for the English translation of the same surah. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, by the morning brightness and the night when it covers with the darkness, your Lord has not forsaken you, nor is he displeased. And indeed, the hereafter is better for you than the present. And your Lord shall soon give you, so you shall be well pleased. Did he not find you an orphan? Then he sheltered. And he found you poor, and he found you lost, and he found you lost, then he guided you, and he found you poor, then he enriched, and as for the orphan, so do not harsh, and as for the beggar, so do not repel, and as for the bounty of your Lord, do proclaim. Thank you so much, Mahira. Indeed, Allah bestows His grace on whoever He wants. Now, <clears throat> today, Zaituna Academy is honored to have Mrs. Shazrina Azmar, better known as Ms. Nina, who is a former international artist from musical industry who once took Malaysia by storm. She began her spiritual hijra journey, realizing the inevitable truth of Islam, and became a student of knowledge and dawa. By being the co-founder of DOPS TV, which is Malaysia's leading English Islamic YouTube channel and the co-founder of Kalvi app, which is Islamic lifestyle application, and also the co-founder of Rai Ventures. She proves out to be an inspiring budding Muslim entrepreneur. She is a guest speaker today for this program who is going to share with us her spiritual journey and will also talk upon some of the reflections from her newly launched book named Light for the Lost Souls. As for the uh, questions are concerned, I would like to request our dear viewers that you can uh, leave your questions in the comment box and the time will decide at the end of the program that how many questions we can entertain as we have promised Sister Ms. Nina that we'll take only one hour from her. Inshallah, I will try to stick to this promise as per our tradition. And so, Assalamu Alaikum Sister Ms. Nina. Uh, I hope you're well. Wa and in, uh, yes, in India is really, really, really glad to have you and hear you. And without any delay, the stage is all yours now. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair, Dr. Kashbu. Jazakallah khair for the introduction. And uh, first and foremost, I would just like to begin with a dua. Um, billahi min shaitan rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasuli ya kareem. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqdata min lisan yafqahu qawli. Alhamdulillah, it is such a pleasure and uh, honor to be here today uh, with all of you. 
uh, yes. my brothers and sisters from India. And uh, I believe there will be some uh, brothers and sisters also from Malaysia and perhaps from across the globe as well. Um, Jazakallah khair for having me, for reaching out to me. Um, I am uh, excited to share my story with you. And inshallah, I pray that this uh, sharing will be something that is uh, going to be beneficial and inshallah inspiring to everyone who's here. Um, so inshallah, I'll begin with my Hydra story. For those of you who do not know me, my real name is Shazrina Azman, but I go by the stage name uh, of Ms. Nina. And if you YouTube uh, the name is Nina, unfortunately, you might find some of my old videos there, although I have tried to uh, reach out to all the different parties to try to delete them, but it's out of my control. I used to be a singer, rapper, dancer. I was in the entertainment industry for pretty much most of my life. Uh, since I was a very young girl, I was performing on stage and I, and I became a professional artist at the age of 16. And Growing up in Malaysia, we were very much influenced by what we saw in the West. Be, you know, living in an Asian country, a lot of a lot of people, you know, look towards the West to 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 become modern, to become cool like them. And I lived my life in as when I was young um, without Islam. I didn't practice Islam. In fact, music was my dean. Entertainment was my dean. That was what I looked forward to, that was what I bled for, I cried for, it was all for dunya and it was all for entertainment. Just because I wanted it to become like that superstar I saw on MTV or in the movie or in, in the, the song that I loved. And it was just a, a part of me for a very, very long time. I was very much influenced by um, the environment that I was in or the environments that I was in, uh, subhanAllah. So, growing up as a, as a young child that was my influence um but you know subhanallah i just want to say that it wasn't because my parents didn't give me islamic education yes they did alhamdulillah but it was i who was very rebellious and moved away um may allah bless the, them both for you know alhamdulillah everything is from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but they they really gave me a wonderful childhood but it was i who moved away so what happened later on um, when I reached the age of, I think, 17, 18, when I got involved, really involved with the music industry, that was when I was even more exposed to the kind of lifestyle that the industry comes with. And that is, for example, the lifestyle of clubbing, the lifestyle of, you know, meeting all types of different people who introduce you to toxic things in toxic environments, relationships, um, things that are very detrimental to a person's physical, mental, and spiritual well-being. And so I lived that YOLO life, you only live one type of life for quite a number of years, to the point that um, what began as a dream to become a famous artist, uh, you know, somebody who was really good at poetry and what she did as an artist, um, it turned out to be something, something else. Um, I, I, I went into this downward spiral of complete darknesses. I was completely lost, you know. Um, I, I lived for a, for a while in a bit of a depression. Um, I felt like as if I was going to die a few times uh, because of the self-inflicted uh, pain that I was putting myself through, because of the toxicities I allowed in my life, in my heart, and because I was very far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I was very, very far away. And for a long, long time, my soul was, was troubled. And what does it mean when your soul is troubled? It is when, there, when, when the heart and when the soul is void of the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is when we fill our hearts and our souls with the love of dunya, with the love of anything else other than Allah. It becomes very dangerous, be it music, be it, you know, um, it could be smoking, drugs, it could be food, it could be wealth, fame, um, anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is when our soul and our hearts become really lost and we become uncontent. We become uh, egotistical, you know, we become ab absolutely lost in our own little bubble. So, okay, I was living that for a while. Um, and when I, I suppose when I, when I, when I hit my, um, mid 20s that was when i slowly start to realize uh the reality of life 
basically, um, I, you know, I came from a background of music, hip hop, and 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 uh, DJing, and I I didn't think about what was the truth of this life. I didn't think about my bigger purpose in life because I was just so in so involved. I was just so um, attached and uh, um, blinded by the life of dunya, the glitz and the glam of this life. And, and that is something that is, uh, I feel something that a lot of people go through today because um, in the nineties, uh, you know, we didn't really have um, smartphones, right? Uh, in the eighties and nineties, we didn't have any of that. But today the um, exposure to entertainment and all these kinds of things are just at the tip of the finger. So there is a, a bigger challenge for us to really, um, try to really navigate ourselves through this, um, you know, this, uh, this uh, entertainment world, right? Um, so uh, in my mid twenties, my first big wake up call uh, was when my brother passed away in 2007. During those days, um, alhamdulillah, just before he passed away, I alhamdulillah had gotten out of depression. Alhamdulillah, with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I had, um, you know, got rid of a number of negative toxicities in my life. And I was striving to be not um, a good Muslim because I wasn't really praying five times a day at all. I was probably just fasting and praying during Ramadan. And that was about it. But I, I was I was very determined to be a good human being. I just wanted to be healthy. I wanted to be a good daughter. I wanted to, to just be um, a, a positive human being, right? Um, but what woke up my heart? What, in, what ignited the Iman in my heart? was subhanAllah through a calamity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduced to myself and my family in 2007. And that was when my brother passed away. And I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will um, grant him the highest levels of Jannah. And I pray that every time I share my Hijra story and when I share about him, that there will be more light in his grave and that he will gain more rewards and um, weight on his scales, inshallah, ameen, rabba alameen. Through him, I was awoken to um, finding Allah again because through his death, I, 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 didn't, I started to realize that, you know what, there's so much more to this life and death is real. I couldn't believe that um, at that time, you know, remember I was living this YOLO life. I was thinking, oh, you know, I'm still young. I still have all this time, uh, you know, maybe I'll start wearing the hijab. I'll start praying when I'm 40. And um, I thought I had I had all the time to live, but when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala took my brother away, I was I was um, it was like as if a brick, you know, just somebody just punched me in, in my head with the brick, and it just woke me up to the real the reality of this life, that death is real, that there is more, there is a life after death, and then I started asking the very important questions, which is. What is my purpose in life? Where is my brother now? Is he, you know, how is he going to get to Jannah? What's going on in the grave? I, I didn't know these things. You know, I had, I had no idea, I had no clue. So that is why, alhamdulillah, it, it brought me closer to Allah. It brought my family close to each other. And it, um, it, got, me, it got me praying again, alhamdulillah. So the lesson here is that, you know, through any hardship, if a hardship is something that brings a, pro, a person closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it is a blessing. It depends on how we look at it. If, you know, subhanAllah, there's a, there's a famous hadith that talks about, about the, the case of a believer, how wonderful, how wondrous it, it, it is the case of a believer. There's always good for a believer. If it's through hardship, the believer is patient. If it is through blessings, then the, um, the believer is grateful. So I am you know, so grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it happened, that it happened that way. There is so much wisdom behind it because Allah is all wise and it, it gave us so much guidance back to Allah. So that was my biggest wake up call. And then I started praying again. I started to, to, um, to make dua to Allah. I started to become more aware about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The light of Iman ignited in my heart and, uh, Taqwa started to build in my heart, although although I I still did not give up my my career in the entertainment industry, I was still there, but I was I was searching, I was I was praying a little bit, you know, uh, I was struggling, and um, the biggest wake up call 
it was definitely when I was invited to go to Hajj. Um, no, before Hajj, I think we have a bit of time. Before Hajj, uh, alhamdulillah, I got married in 2011 to my husband. And that was also a uh, another pillar or another aha moment, which uh, helped guide me towards getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because as a husband, alhamdulillah, you know, he really tried his best to advise me uh, in terms of praying five times a day, in terms of asking me if I could wear the hijab, and he did it in the most beautiful way because he said, you know, Nina, if you, um, as a husband, I'm advising you that uh, you should start wearing the hijab, uh, but it's up to you if you want to wear it or not. But I did my part in, in asking you to do so. So I was like, okay. But of course, at that time, I was not ready yet because I had I had a couple of albums coming out and I had a music video coming out. It has, I had concerts going on. So I was like, yeah, busy again in the dunya. So next big wake up call was Hajj in 2013. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, I was invited by my mother uh, to go to Hajj and that would be my mother's second time. And that would be my first time with my husband and Alhamdulillah, we went. And during Hajj, uh, that, was, um, that was what moved me to begin my journey in, in seeking beneficial knowledge. That was the beginning of my, um, my journey with the Quran. Because at the age of 33, I did not know and I've forgotten how to even read Quran. I didn't know Alif Bata. I had completely forgotten everything. The only thing that I remembered was the Al-Fatiha and the three calls. And I didn't even know, I didn't even memorize the Ayat al-Kursi as well at that time. But subhanAllah, subhanAllah, you know, look, reflecting back on, on, on this, I feel that because I had al-Fatiha al in my heart, I had the three calls, and whenever I was in distress, whenever I was in trouble, I would recite, I would recite it. And I feel that that was also what helped me through the 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 times when I was lost, because ihdina siratul mustaqim guide me on the straight path, guide me on the straight path. And I believe that is what that is what Allah did, subhanAllah. I was lost and then he found me. And in finding Allah, I found myself. And that was what happened in um, Hajj. Uh, on the plane of Arafah, I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow all of us, inshallah, to, to experience Hajj and to perform it, inshallah, one day, inshallah, when things get better, inshallah. At the plane of Arafah, I was there. Again, I'm still a newbie to Islam, whether even though I was born Muslim, but I was still a newbie. I saw everyone dressed in the ihram. I subhanAllah saw thousands and thousands of people, you know, wearing wearing ihram from different backgrounds, different ages, you know, some rich, some poor, you know, all different races. And it was just so beautiful. Everybody was, was searching for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everybody was making dua, making tawbah. And I was, I was, I was at awe. I was just, I was speechless at, at just the, the level of, of spirituality that I felt on that day. And then that was when I, I understood what it really meant to be Muslim, you know, being someone who submits completely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, somebody who submits completely, you know, shed, you know, take off the ego, take off, you know, all of these um, layers of ego and, and to really realize who, you know, your Rabb is and who you are to your Rabb, mean, meaning we're just slaves of Allah and we're really nobody without him. And that is what I felt on the day of Arafah. And that was also the day I learned how to make tawbah. Previously, I, 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 didn't, I, I didn't know how to make tawbah. All I knew was how to cry. I just knew how to make dua, just normal prayer. But because everybody around me was making tawbah, and I had, mashallah, alhamdulillah, um, a number of, uh, mashallah, amazing ustazas and ustaz to, to, to guide me. Um, alhamdulillah, I, I, I told myself, I said, okay, everyone's crying. Everyone's praying. I need to, I need to get there. I want to be there. I want to get in that same zone as everybody else. And I want to be a Muslim just like everybody else. And I, I don't want to, um, I don't want to, I don't want to have this ego anymore. I don't want to have this fear in me anymore about what people will say, about what 
um, the society will say, if I, if I return a different person, if I put on the hijab, if I start praying again, I, I don't care what people say anymore. Ya Allah, I only care about what about you. And that was that was some of the feelings that I went through um, during Hajj. And Alhamdulillah, um, I came back to Malaysia, I kept my hijab on. And I was determined to, to continue to learn as I was learning every day, you know, um, asking my ustaza, asking, looking at the people around me, observing what they're doing. You know, I just wanted to keep on learning because 33 years of my life, maybe not 33, maybe 25 years, years of my life, I dedicated myself to dunya. I dedicated myself to pleasing people, to uh, entertainment, to music, to my desires in becoming who I wanted and, and getting the fame and getting the glory. And when I came back to from Hajj, I realized, you know what? I don't know how long I have left in this life. I don't know when I'm going to die. So I want to dedicate myself and my time towards learning more about the deen and towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, Allah made it easy for me um, to let go of my career. I immediately called my manager and I told her that I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to perform anymore. I didn't want to. I wanted to cancel all my projects and alhamdulillah she said okay there was absolutely no why or there was no friction alhamdulillah alhamdulillah <coughs> my family uh, alhamdulillah they were also very supportive of course my father being my father he's always making sure that you know okay nina you want to wear the hijab well make sure that you're doing it for the right reason and you're not just going to you know, put it on and off and you're just going to play around with this. No, you, if you want to do it, make sure you prove that you really doing it for the right reasons. And alhamdulillah, he, you know, I told him why and, and he was okay with that. But the struggle was definitely, I mean, people think that when you make hijrah, a spiritual hijrah, once you wear the hijab, it is something that, that you've accomplished. Yes, it is, but it's, it's, it doesn't stop there. You know, just because a person wears a hijab, it doesn't mean that the hijrah stops. You know, it just means that we have to continue to stay istiqam and, and trying to to earn all this pleasure and all this love. Um, and so, uh, I left the the music industry, um, and then I I just dedicated myself to slowly but surely learn how to read the Quran again. Even though when I went to Hajj, I I only had like two months to to relearn the Quran again, um, and and I couldn't really read smoothly at all. Um, but um, at least I, I started. And so when I came back, I, I, I went, I, I signed up for Tajweed classes every week, twice a week with my, with my teacher. And then we go through it. And then slowly but surely I went for Tafsir and I went for you know, weekend classes. And Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, I, I, I've been continuing to seek um, beneficial knowledge ever since then. So um, basically, SubhanAllah, I feel that without having um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me the tawfiq to be able to um, go ahead and, and search for beneficial ill. I feel that without the light of Quran in my life, I think that I would have not, I wouldn't have stayed steadfast. I wouldn't have been able to keep on my hijab and, or continue my Quranic studies or been able to get through a lot of the different difficulties and struggles that have happened these many years. And, and, and that is exactly what the Quran is. The Quran is light. The Quran is guidance. The Quran is the answer to all of our problems. And it is it should be the spring of our hearts in this life and the next. And um, I was just reflecting because today uh, it was it's like the third last class of my Ta'lim al-Quran uh, diploma program that I'm doing. And I've, I've been studying in that program for three years now. And I was just reflecting upon how how blessed it is to be able to study the Quran um, and, and how that is basically the biggest blessing any person could have, Iman and Quran. And just being able uh, to be here as well to share with you all is also another huge blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be able to share the message. Um, and uh, I'm ever so grateful to Allah and also very grateful to Zaytuna Academy for having me here. Um, that is basically my... Uh, my hijrah in a nutshell. Um, I, perhaps, uh, uh, doctor, should I move on to speaking about the book? Oh, uh, yeah, sure, sister. Okay, inshallah. Um, we will have a QA session, I think, at the end, uh, probably 15 minutes before. Yes. Um, 
the session, inshallah. So <coughs> I'm looking forward to seeing if anyone has any questions. So alhamdulillah, I, uh, I have a book, my very first book that I wrote. It's, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, okay, you can't see it properly. But it's okay. Uh, it's called Light for the Lost Soul. This is uh, the first book of a volume uh, of a trilogy, inshallah. And uh, the content of this book mainly talks about um, finding purpose in life. And uh, I share my reflections about my hijra, uh, about the different lessons that I learned throughout these seven years of, of my hijra towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I also share some poetry in it as well. Um, it is a non-fiction mm -hmm. educational book about um, hijra. And, and the hijra, you know, a lot of people think, yes, hijra is, is more of a physical journey from A to B, but it's also a, a spiritual hijra from being, uh, you know, bad to good, or from letting go of bad habits to um, acquiring uh, good habits. And um, a, as I mentioned earlier um, in, in the beginning of my sharing, um, a troubled heart is a heart that is void of the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is void of um, Quran. It is void of the love of Allah and the love of the deen and the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And uh, I can't remember which verses in the Quran, uh, but Allah says that, uh, you know, um, a life without, um, is it a life without Quran? I mean, if you don't, if there's no Quran, if there's no Allah in your life, you will, it will be a depressed life. Basically, that's, that's kind of like what it means. And that is what the book is about. It's about talking about hearts and souls who have been searching for answers, who have been searching for the truth. And I talk about that. And I talk about how, um, we need to um, let go of these uh, false attachments in life um, because that is exactly what keeps the heart hard. It is what uh, blinds the heart from the truth of this life, right? Um, and the harder your heart is, then um, subhanAllah, the further you are away uh, from Allah, the further you are away. So um, I talk about how, um, how we can basically how hardships are actually blessings in life in order to actually remind us to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to break the hard hearts. The Quran is the only thing that can actually melt the heart, that can, that can bring life into a dead heart. And, um, and that, that's one of the things that I talked about in this book. It's very much um, inspired by my time after Hijra when I went for a Islamic retreat with Uzza Yasmin Mojahid in, in New Zealand. And a lot of the things that she talked about really helped me with, with, my, uh, with, the, with, with my situation. And it was, always, it was always about the heart. And there's a famous hadith that talks about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not judge us by our looks or our beauty, but he will judge us by our hearts, our intentions, right? And our actions. So again, it goes back to the heart. If the heart is, is good, then so will our speech, so will our thoughts, so will our actions. And if the heart is corrupted, therefore our speech and our actions and our thoughts will also be negative and corrupted as well. So I talk about that. I share about the reality of life, about how this life is just a temporary place, about how, subhanAllah, we're, we should just live as travelers in this life, how we should live um, travel light as we go along our way um, uh, at the pit stop, which is, this is the pit stop, waiting for our next terminal, uh, which is the afterlife, the next des destination. Um, and then I talk also share about how um, we should all, you know, put on the glasses of akhirah rather than living with the glasses of, of dunya. Because when we live with the glasses of dunya, then what we think is success in this life um, is different from what real success is. Real success is according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran and Sunnah. Real success is based on taqwa, is based on iman. But when we wear um, the glasses of dunya, which is exactly what I was wearing before I made hijra, we would think that success is how famous you are, how rich you are, how how many cars you are, how many you have, uh, how many cars you have, and how many houses you have, you know, around the world. Um, and just because a person has more money doesn't mean that he has more honor. The true honor is in what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala teaches us at, uh, is true honor. Um, so that is the lens of Akhirat. So, you know, it's a lot of, um, you know, again, 
uh, sharing with people the different lessons that I've learned about Allah, about Quran and Sunnah. My hope with this book is, is that I wanted to inspire people to, to get closer to Allah, um, especially those who perhaps are fearful of making that first step, scared of what society may say, scared of what their family may say, that um, hopefully this book will give them the courage to do so, to really go and walk on your path. Everybody's path is different. Everybody's hijra is different. The timing is different. The method is different. Um, Allah will send us different tests according to what we can bear. So um, I really hope to inspire more people to, to take that one step because if you take that step towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you go, if you walk to him, he will come running to you. And know that when you sacrifice anything for his sake, sincerely for his sake, then he will replace that with something that is much better, better than anything that you could ever attain in this entire life. Um, and for those who perhaps who are already on the journey, you know, I really hope that perhaps this book can also um, inspire some motivation, um, hopefully inspire um, all of us and including myself again to reflect upon our lives where we are at to reflect upon the state of our hearts is does our heart need more cleansing um do we have any grudges in our hearts do we need to to rectify ourselves our actions our character so it is a moment of reflection inshallah um that inshallah this book will give um, and, and of course, you know, this, it's the month of Ramadan. This is the best time to actually do a lot of purification of the heart um, and to, inshallah, come out of Ramadan with a, a clean slate, inshallah, with Laylatul Qadr coming up as well. Um, I, uh, yeah, I guess, you know, that's pretty much about the book um, in a nutshell. There's a lot more that I share as well in the book about, about modesty, about social media, um, and about... Um, some tips on how we can purify our hearts uh, so that inshallah we can gain a heart that is salim which is a heart that is pure free from all the diseases of the hearts like jealousy envy greed you know selfishness stinginess and and things of that sort which lead a person to do a lot of sins and and it becomes you know and that's when a person goes downhill again and blinded from the truth and and things like that so um, my book is, of course, uh, for those who are looking for it, it is available. You can check it out on my um, social media networks. It's all there, inshallah. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I guess, doc doctor, I guess um, that's all I'm going to share about the book. I don't want to basically tell everything because uh, hopefully uh, people can uh, explore it for themselves. Yeah, uh, and I, I completely understand. So, mashallah. Uh, Alhamdulillah, Jazakallahu Khair, Sister Ms. Nina, uh, for sharing the gems from your book and also your transformation journey, where you successfully managed to find the real owner of the heart of all the human beings. And I thank you so much for giving us a slot from your hectic schedule, as I'm completely aware that you are trying your best to not to leave any stone unturned to tackle the issues and the crises and challenges faced by the Muslim youth. And which is very obvious from your series, like uh, Beyond Translation with Ustad Noman Ali Khan, and be it my, my next report for Sheikh Yahya Ibrahim and many other recognized international Islamic scholars like Ustad Yasmin Mujahid, Imam Umar Suleiman, Sheikh Mufti Meng, and many others. Mashallah, I would like to advise the viewers that they should go to uh, all these sources to benefit from them and the book at last. The Light for Lost Souls. It is a highly rec recommended by Zetuna Academy as it is a transformation story of a person and it is uh, without any age bar. It is, it is, uh, it is a book that every, everyone can go for. Whoever needs spiritual upliftment and uh, as it is a transformation story of a person who had it all at once at a particular point of life, she had everything that this futile world has offered, has offered her. And uh, but still, she decided to find her true happiness in the Deen of Allah by being a, a true seeker of one true God, one true peace, and one true knowledge. So now, uh, I would like to invite the questions. Uh, Sir, uh, Sh Dr. Shadan Samarali, she's a co-host and training manager at Zetun Academy. Uh, can we have the questions, please? Yeah, exactly. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah khair, sister Anira. Uh, it was a great uh, to hear you, your journey. 
Uh, there are a few questions from the audience side. Uh, am I audible to you? Okay. Yes, please. Okay. The first question is: After leaving the interest in music, how you feel now? Whenever you hear any kind of music. Um, okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I am not as uh, affected by music as I used to be. Um, music has the has the effect has a very powerful effect effect on the heart and. Uh, Right after my hijra, after Hajj, it was still a bit sensitive. It was still very difficult for me to to slowly kind of get rid of it. Um, of course, you know I'm uh, married to a musician, so I'm always surrounded by music. Um, I've always been surrounded by music all my life. But what really helped um, uh, was was basically when I threw out. I didn't throw out the music, but I gave it away to some of my um, uh, colleagues from the music industry. Um, and Alhamdulillah, when I you know go to the mall, when you know, of course, you cannot avoid music. Music in many places, it's just there. Um, it, alhamdulillah, it doesn't affect. I think that uh, having a uh, something of a replacement is is very helpful. Of course, Quran is the best to 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 um, to get rid of the love of music. Um, but for sisters who perhaps are struggling with with dealing with the uh, the addiction to music and the effect of it, perhaps um, we can try to to listen to to, to some nashis, perhaps something that is a bit. Uh, better for the soul, I think, um, you know, uh, do more vicar as well, um, better content, right? Uh, music today, there's a lot of filth in, in the music. So we need to really, really protect our, our faculties, our ears and, and, and from watching the music videos as well, because if we, if we listen to it too long and we, we watch it for too long, it will definitely affect us. So yes, Alhamdulillah, I'm okay right now, but may Allah protect us from uh, being uh, addicted to music, inshallah. I mean, Amin, inshallah, and yeah, it is exactly that Quran is the best uh, thing to heal up. Okay, the next question is uh, how Muslim community responded towards your change, and what kind of problems you faced at, in the beginning? I mean, what are the challenges you faced? Okay, Bismillah. Um, Alhamdulillah, I didn't face too many challenges, although. Um, I, uh, I suppose uh, quite a number of people who I fought with my friends, um, not, we're not my friends anymore. Many, uh, not many, but quite a few of them questioned um, the reason why I had uh, changed into a different person. Although I am still the same, but I, I grew. I, I grew up to, to become a, a better person. They asked me, why, Nina? What's wrong? What's wrong with you? Why are you leaving your career now, now that you're at your peak? Um, so I had to kind of uh, deal with with those kind of comments, and and uh, for a while it did affect me. Um, but Alhamdulillah, uh, Allah blessed me with good friends, and he he introduced me to even more amazing sisters who who reminds me of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala every time I see them. Alhamdulillah. So um, the challenge of of losing friends, I think, was there. Uh, definitely, there was a challenge in, in trying to find a career path for me after um, leaving the entertainment industry. That was that was kind of a challenge. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do, um, but Alhamdulillah, you know, I made a lot of du'a to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and and He arranged everything for me. Subhanallah, somebody just. Gave me a call and she said, Nina, let's let's do an Islamic program, you know, and 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 let's go learn with Usaza Yasmin, and then uh, you know, and it it, it it kind of developed from there, and from 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 programs, it turned to a production company, and a production company, it then ventured out to to technology in in opening um, uh, an Islamic app. So, alhamdulillah, these challenges, um, I I feel that if we Ha hold on to Allah and we have strong faith, we have tawakul, and we put in the effort to try to strive to use what we have for the sake of Allah, Allah will arrange everything for you. So alhamdulillah, it, was, it wasn't too challenging, yes. Um, Dr. Khujbu, is there any um, more time to ask questions? Uh, just a few minutes. Uh, if, you, if you have some question, you can. Okay, uh, there is one more question uh, that how you connect uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you are alone? Okay. Um, when I'm alone, I, I actually, I really love and appreciate the time I have alone <laughs> with Allah um, because sometimes it's hard for us to, to find the kushur or sometimes I, I find it difficult to, to cry in my salah when I have a lot of people around me. Um, but what I love to do is to uh, make a lot of dua in my sujood 
I, I, I feel like that's how, um, and of course in the sujood, that's where we are closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I, I like to always spend time in my sujood. I, I would love to advise and to share with everyone, hopefully that we can maybe spend more time in the sujood, especially in the last high nights of Ram, uh, Ramadan. And I, you know, um, I suppose when I'm alone, I, I like to talk to Allah, although it's not that often. <laughs> I feel like uh, the conversation that we need to have Allah should be something that should happen very regularly. Um, but I'm I'm working on that, inshallah. Um, and I, I feel perhaps it's probably very similar to many of you sisters, you know, how you spend your time with Allah alone. You know, we read Quran, we make dhikr, sometimes we talk to him, sometimes we make dua. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we always have to remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always with us, whether we are alone or whether we are with people, that he's always watching us. So, yes, uh, I hope that that kind of answer the question although i don't want to like reveal everything but yes it's very similar to all my sisters here we all do the same things i think when we're alone with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay uh, uh sister uh i have one question that these were the challenges you faced uh, from the side of the uh, people who are already muslim but maybe they were not practicing and they were from uh, the, in the same industry you left and uh Kindly uh, elaborate some of the challenges that you faced from the people who were practicing. Okay. Um, okay. Many, most of the Malaysians, all most Malays were born Muslim here in Malaysia. Um, definitely, you know, I were growing up, I was amongst a lot of Muslims who probably didn't practice Mus uh, Islam as well, which was what I was doing. Um, and so when when uh, when I came back, I think that um, there were definitely just some remarks, you know, um, of just they don't understand why I have to be so extreme, you know, why do I have to put on the hijab, um, why do I have to go for all these classes? Like, oh, Nina, it's you know, you think you're you're being a little bit too extreme, you know, you have to be careful, you know, I, these kind of comments, um, which was quite uh, discouraging uh, for a while. Um, and then, uh, of course, uh, alhamdulillah, I think my non-Muslim friends, they were non-judgmental to me. I mean, my, the friends that I had. Um, and oh, definitely some of the negative comments that I got, uh, for example, uh, Ms. Nina, why, uh, why are your eyebrows shaved? Right? Because um, I just came back. I didn't know that you couldn't shave your eyebrows, right? It's, 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 uh, it's not allowed. Um, or why is your hijab so short? Why is it like this? You're doing it wrong. You're doing it this. But, and I felt like, okay, well, I just came back from Hajj. I'm learning. I, I'm still, you know, I'm still, a, I'm hardly even a student of knowledge. Like, I don't know anything much. You know, but I, I do know that I want to get closer to Allah. And 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 it was funny enough, it was from the Muslim community, especially on, on social media, you know, a lot of um, negative comments, right? Um, a lot of just criticizing and, 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 you know, a lot of criticizing rather than uplifting and encouraging. Um, but alhamdulillah, I think um, because I've been in the uh, limelight for a long time, I've been in the entertainment industry for a long time. So I, I'm very used to these kinds of, criticisms and comments, people will never be happy, you know, really be um, mm. happy with whatever you do, even if it's good or bad, you know. So I thought to myself, you know what, I don't really care what they say, they can say what they want. Um, I'm just going to focus on, 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 you know, um, Allah and, and what I want to do with him, uh, you know, in terms of getting closer to him. And uh, alhamdulillah, you know, I what I did was I just deleted all the comments and just blocked block them. And so for some of the friends that um, that questioned my hijra, I, I didn't want to get into any uh, explanations or um, try to defend myself to them or explain myself to them because I, I was not, um, you know, when you, I was not ready to, to, to explain it to them. I was a very, I was in a very sensitive um, position at that time. But alhamdulillah, after a few years, <laughs> after a few years, I, I managed to get in contact again. And um, yeah, everything's okay. Just that we're not that close, you know, as and when, if they want to meet up, I will meet up. And, and um, if they want to ask about Islam, then I will, I will just share a little bit. But I think it's, um, you know, in, in Malaysia, um, there are a lot of uh, Muslims that are still perhaps uh, very, very liberal, very open, um, uh, perhaps not practicing. So, you know, um, I feel that, um, but, you know, at the same time, you know, uh, 
they are supportive as well. So um, most of the challenges definitely came from uh, the public through social media. But alhamdulillah, it's, it's okay. Once in a while, it, it does happen. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, sister, for sharing valuable lessons. And I, I really think we should drive lessons from this talk and we should think, we should try to be very considerate and open up our hearts to whoever is coming to the of Allah. We should not be judgmental and we should try to open our hearts and uh, try to be little of uh, very uh, open up, like open up, please don't be so narrow. Like why are you doing this and why are you doing that? Okay, so this is the situation. I discussed it because this is a situation that everyone who tries to follow the deen, who didn't used to follow it uh, before, faces the same situation uh, at the hands of the uh, Muslims. So, okay, um, now Jazakallah sister, let's call it a day. And okay. Uh, we, uh, okay, you you have to say something or should I carry on? Um, I, yeah, can I, if you don't mind, I just want to uh, remind and share with everyone. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to DOPS TV. We have a lot of amazing Islamic content that inshallah will inspire. Uh, and uh, don't forget to download Qalabi app as well. Uh, it is uh, free for download, inshallah. Um, lots of uh, amazing features that can inshallah uh, be a companion, uh, hopefully in the month of Ramadan and beyond. Um, and Jazakumullah uh, Khairan to everybody who's here for spending your time with us today uh, to Zaituna um, Academy for having me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. May Allah reward you and, and grant you a high status with him. I mean, Rabbi Alameen, to everybody who is involved in, in making this happen. So, Jazakum Lahu Khairan, everyone. Jazakum Lahu Khairan, sister. Uh, okay, so now we hope that everyone is going to leave from this program with a uh, full of inspiration and zeal in their hearts and we hope that the relationship this program has established with the uh, system is Nina relationship of Zaytuna Academy and its viewers with system is Nina I hope this relationship does not end with this program and it has to go a long way inshallah whenever India will need you sister we'll be knocking at your door inshallah and uh, I would like to wind up this program uh, by following the footsteps of our ancestors, where the companions of Prophet, peace be upon him, used to part their ways by reciting Surah Al Asr. And uh, so, A'uzu billahi mina shaitwani wajim, Bismillahi rahmani rahim, wal Asr, nal insan ala fi khusr, illa ladina amanu, wa amilu shalihati, wa tawasu bil haqi, wa tawasu bil sab. Ameen ya rabbil alameen, jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.